a tumbling gymnast. One you can make in three parts. First, the trapeze, second, the gymnast, and thirdly, putting it all together. Let's have a look at the trapeze. Very simple, you just use sticks, and they can be any sort of sticks really, to make a sort of lopsided H like that, or a funny sort of rugby goalpost. I've used uh, thin sticks here, you can use thicker, you can use dowling if you like, but it really doesn't matter too much as long as they're nice and straight and you can get a nail to go through them. Well, let's see how we put them all together. I'll go to slightly thicker sticks. They're about, I suppose, twice the length of your hand, around about there. Now, you have to separate them, as you saw, with a transverse stick, a bit shorter, like that. And I've already drilled these so I can nail them together without splitting the wood. So let's see if we can put them together. First of all, in goes the nail. And that nails into the cross piece like that. Turn it over. Do the same thing on the other side. In with the nail and biff it together. It doesn't matter if that's a fairly loose joint because the thing's going to be tied together with string anyway. In fact, it has to be a loose joint for it all to work. But your hand should, in the final instance, be able to grip from one side to the other and squeeze those together. One last thing you must do, and that's to notch the top of them. I've cut a notch before I started around there and around there so I can tie a loop of string right around both of those and it won't slip off. If you haven't done that before you start, you'd do that now and set the goalposts aside. Let's have a look at the gymnast, stage two. Well, the gymnast has a body of a cork and the head of part of a cork. And that's fairly easy to achieve with something like a hacksaw blade. Even if you haven't got a hacksaw, the blade will do. Just cut the end off a piece of cork, like that, a cork, or wine corks are the best. And that gets pinned or nailed onto the body in this fashion. I'll use a nail. Now, if you just pin it, there's a danger that the head will slide down the pin or the nail onto the body. It'll look a bit strange, so to prevent that, you give it a neck. Let's just rest that there so we don't lose it. The neck, I think, is most easily made by cutting a section of straw. There we are, that ought to be about the right length. And you take the nail or pin, put it through the straw, and then push it into the body, and the straw will keep those at a decent interval. If you have to, biff them too. There we are, head neck and body. Now all we need are the arms and the legs and we go to cardboard for that. This is thin cardboard, in fact it's a manila folder and I've folded it over so when I cut it I cut two shapes exactly the same. So here come the legs which roughly cut to about the right sort of size will be I guess something like that. Fairly chunky legs, he's going to be a muscular gymnast. There we are, the legs don't matter too much but they should be about the right sort of proportion for the body. We'll put them to one side, we've got two the same. Now the arms are a bit more crucial because we start with a muscular part above the elbow there, then between the elbow and the wrist down there, and the hand has to be wide enough to allow you to knock two nail holes side by side. So if we cut down from here, do the same sort of thing, there are the gymnast's arms, and you notice that those hands are really pretty wide indeed. Here we go, throw the rest of the cardboard away. And we do have, once again, two arms of exactly the same shape there. Before we separate them, put them down, and using a last nail, biff two holes side by side that string can go through. Here we go. One there. Wiggle it round a bit. And one there. And now we can assemble the gymnast. Right, well, let's start with the legs. I'll work on this side. Hold one leg there, and with a pin, you can use a nail, but a pin is better, drive it through the cardboard and into the body and wiggle it around a bit so that the cardboard really does move freely. It won't take much wiggling, but the hole should be a bit bigger than the pin. And if you have trouble driving it in with your fist or your finger, which is possible, you can press it in either with something hard like a hammer, or if you want to avoid bending the pin, you can use tweezers or pliers and drive it in like that. Make sure it doesn't come out the other side, especially into your finger. But leave the head not poking out too much, otherwise it'll foul the arm. Now notice that that leg swings pretty freely, and that's what you need. Put the other one on the other side, directly opposite, and then you go to the arms. And once again, use a pin through them, drive the pin through and wiggle it round so everything is a nice loose fit, and put the arm on, and this is very important, right above the leg, same sort of thing, drive it in with tweezers if you must, and put the other arm exactly opposite on the other side of the body. And at that point, you can colour the little man or woman in with uh, faces, clothes, whatever you like, and it'll look like this. 
Well, there we are. All loosely made and colourfully coloured in. And with one important addition, a loop of string. Notice that it goes through the front holes of the hands, around, through the back holes of the hand, and it's tied there to make a complete loop, and it's just the right size to fit onto the notched ends of the trapeze that you made to receive it. Now, the way you put it on, stage three, is most important. You have to hold the trapeze upside down, the long legs pointing downwards, and you hold the acrobat the right way up. That way you can put one loop over that notch there and the other loop over this notch here and of course you can adjust the knot at this stage if you have to so it stays on there. And that means that when you turn the trapeze up the right way the string gets a twist in it which you can see just beside the acrobat's hands there. Now that twist is most important because when you now squeeze on the bottom of the trapeze that adds tension to this string and the twist comes out and the acrobat stands up like that. So by very careful squeezing and relaxing you can make it stand up or flip over or somersault or do all sorts of amazing things and those loosely jointed limbs will kick about. You can make an acrobat to do almost anything like